Welcome, welcome to ELL 232. Guys, I got to tell you once again about our fantastic Patreon, the Lions of Liberty Pride, the one and the only greatest group you can ever be a part of or will ever be a part of. It's like the Red Rider BB gun. The greatest Christmas you will ever experience is joining the Pride. You get our bonus content like my good morning fuckhead shows, my daily rants. I've been doing them from, uh, from San Francisco here. A little bit more about that in the main show. But of course, also... Conspiracy Corners, Do Nothing Man, Degenerate Gamblers, live video feeds into the Pride. And of course, you also can influence the show. If you want to join at a higher level, at 25, at 50, or 100, you can influence the show. You can get shout outs on the show. You can be a part of what happens with this program. So check it on out, guys. Go to patreon.com forward slash Lions of Liberty. Don't be a jerk. Join today. Welcome to Electric Liberty Land, here on the Lions of Liberty podcast, your weekly shot of culture, comedy, and liberty with your host, Brian McWilliams. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Electric Liberty Land. And don't you worry, little turtle doves, Big Papa Brian, he's not going to charge you those Hennessy prices like Hunter Biden wants to do. No, I got you just on the regular old, good old-fashioned Liberty pricing here. That much is assured. Yeah, welcome to the show, guys. I am um, doing this from the road, so it's going to be shorter. I already warned you of that last episode. But I'm, uh, I'm sitting here, I'm holding the mic like I'm doing stand-up. So hopefully my volume doesn't fluctuate too much here and doesn't pop too much because I don't have my mic stand on me. But fortunately for me, I've been gifted out of the blue by the gods, the smiling gods that have finally decided to favor their number one son, Brian McWilliams, with some news that is just so delightful, so hilarious. Now, this news, if you didn't get my reference to Hennessy, centers around the Bidens, the family that can't help but fuck up, including old senile Joe, who, of course, just gave a speech about the Tulsa massacre that happened, of course, the horrible, uh, horrible instance of racial hate in our past. And the anniversary of which was this past week. I may have been a couple days ago. It might have been over the weekend, actually. I'm not sure the exact date. But Joe Biden goes out there, gives a speech, right? And then in the middle of the speech, pulls a Joe Biden. Just loses his place. He's talking about black entrepreneurs. He's like, you know, these black entrepreneurs, they, they, got, they got great ideas, man. You know, except they, they have great ideas, but they don't have lawyers. They don't have accountants. But it doesn't mean they don't have great ideas. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? They don't have lawyers. They don't have accountants. There are black lawyers. There are black accountants. I know many black people who have lawyers and accountants. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck are you talking about, Joe? Just a hilarious example, once again, of the uh, uh, the bigotry of low expectations that the Democrats truly excel at. But with that in mind, uh, Hunter handed Joe his beer and one upped him because new text messages have now been released to the public that are just magnificent. And these were apparently uh, obtained. I don't know how they were obtained exactly by the daily mail. And let me just read some of these to you because they're just so fucking good. So starts off, you know, he's having a conversation with George Messiers, uh, their white $900 an hour lawyer. And uh, Hunter says, oh, yeah, yeah. How much do I owe you? Because N-word, you better not be charging me Hennessy rates. To which his lawyer responds, that made me snarf my coffee. He says, I just made that phrase up, by the way. I should have had your lineage. Clever son of a gun, says the lawyer. It's wasted on you, says Hunter. Apparently you do. That's what I'm saying, my N-word. And it cuts off after two words. And uh, there's much, much more, though. Let me scroll down a little bit on this Daily Mail article. So... They're having some other weird conversation with his lawyer. And he says, Hunter goes, where do you find unconditional love then, George? George replies, God loves unconditionally. Bo loves you unconditionally. Children are too young to understand what it means, but you will show them. There are ideals of unconditional love that serve as proxies. I don't have many. You, God. And then Hunter replies, oh my God, N-word, did you just use a, fi- did, you, did, you, did you just a fictional, sorry, Hunter writes not so good, <laughs> despite the fact that he is a professor of uh, what fake news at some jerk off college. 
OMG N-word did you just a fictional character from the imagination of the collective frightened and my dead brother's unconditional love is what I should rely on and my kids aren't children, George. That sentence makes no fucking sense. His lawyer responds, my parents' love was conditioned. Hunter responds, my penis as of late has been unconditional. George says, that's why we are searching. Hunter replies, for my penis. Now that is kind of funny. I'm not going to give it credit. <laughs> and then George says, and we will always be searching. Hunter replies, it's a big penis, George. They always find it. Now, of course, I have to think that Hunter's referring to the crack whores he regularly hires that find his penis because of the money he's giving them. And then Hunter goes on to say, I only love you because you're black. So there's done that. Anyway, it goes on and on. There's also an exchange from a picture that shows a hug between Joe Biden and Barack Obama. Joe Biden's leading in. He goes, can I just do it just this once, Barack? And Barack says, okay. He goes, Barack, you my nigga. So this is, this is basically what this come out. Now, this couldn't come at a better time for all of us, for all of our enjoyment. It couldn't come at a better time for, again, the Democratic establishment to be exposed as just a bunch of fucking hypocrites. You know, this critical race theory bullshit that they're pushing, they don't believe a word of it. It's just a means for them to take power. It's a means for them to censor the people that they want to censor, to push through Marxist ideologies, to indoctrinate students into a collective way of thinking, a nanny state government. They don't give a fuck about black people. They don't give a fuck about minorities. I mean, how obvious is it? Who would have thought, right? This guy, this white dude that was brought up with the absolute privilege that only a child of a senator could have, a drug-addled maniac who had been gifted jobs on oil boards, has been gifted teaching jobs, has been given literally everything in his life. Who would have thought that he would use such language? Now, look. I'm not one to say that you can't joke around. I'm not one to say that I don't, you know, I have friends that have used the N word in this context and it's with the A on the end. It's not the hard R, right? But my point isn't that this is a joke. My point isn't that we should cancel Hunter Biden. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the hypocrisy runs so fucking deep here that that's the delight. That's the cherry on the Sunday here for me. And I can't wait to see how they're going to try to tiptoe around it or just not cover it flat out, right? I'm sure the media will just drop it like, a, like it's a, like a dead frog on the side of the highway. That's not a phrase, but I'm making up that phrase just like Hunter made up his phrase. Hennessy in this shit. You know, you're not going to see any questions for Jen Psaki about it, who just went on with Brian Stetler and did the most ridiculous, cringy fucking little... I mean, this. speaking of toads dead on the side of the road, Brian Stetler talking to Jen Psaki was embarrassing. He didn't ask her any hard questions. He just was gooing and guying and cooing over this fucking chick because... And this is the man who's supposed to be supposedly policing, right? Policing the media, talking to the press secretary, whose job it is to lie. Press secretaries are liars. That's what they're paid to do. They're paid to spin. They're paid to obfuscate. They're paid to tell you nothing but lies because the government doesn't want you to know the truth. Why would they? So he's sitting there just ooing and eyeing, just like Fauci when he went on MSNBC and they didn't ask him a single goddamn question about his emails, didn't ask him a single thing about the masks, didn't ask him a single thing about him talking to the people about lab leaks, the Chinese guy thanking him for dismissing the lab theory, the other uh, guy that was involved in the lab, the funding of the lab, trying to cover this up and trying to push it under the fucking bed. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. But then you see, coming full circle, what goes on behind the scenes yeah, just, just dropping racial slurs like it's no big deal. To your lawyer, by the way. To your lawyer. It's just, it's too delicious. And, you know, I'm sure somebody will eventually have the balls to ask Hunter about this. And I can't wait to see what his comment is. Hunter Biden, when reached for commentary, replied, My nigga, that's Russian disinformation. <laughs> How funny would that be? Uh, can we start calling Hunter by den word? Like, Hunter by slash N word. Cause I think we should by den word. Anyway, I'm off my game a little bit here, guys. So I'm recording in a hotel. I'm trying to be a little quiet. You know, I'm in San Francisco hotel here. So I'm trying not to yell too loudly as people walk around and, uh, and upset them, but it's just uh, fucking amazing, man. So a couple more things I want to talk about here too, while we're chatting today. Um, you know, I was talking about censorship. I was talking about the application of critical race theory and all these other platforms that are used to silence any opposition while indoctrinating the masses. 
Joe Biden's Department of Justice, right? Joe Biden himself has already talked about red flag laws, what he wants to do to curb gun violence and all this shit. And I had warned you before about Barack Obama using the same tactic or threatening to in regards to red flag laws and trying to tie them in with healthcare, trying to tie them in with, you know, a doctor, a teacher, a spouse, uh, a loved one, um, you know, a parent, whoever it might be. And I'm sure the Biden administration and the powers that be will throw a very, very wide net. Your drug dealer maybe can turn you in for a red flag violation. And of course, by red flags, we're talking about laws which will be put into place that give the government the power to take away your guns based upon a report from who the fuck knows. Again, like I said, could be virtually anybody, and I'm sure they will throw a very wide net about it, saying that they view you as mentally unstable or dangerous, or you've been acting weird, or maybe you've been drinking too much, or maybe you haven't been drinking enough and you got the shakes, whatever it is. But they're going to say, you know, this person shouldn't be trusted with guns. And if you don't think this is going to be used like in a far ranging application, let's not forget too, that they used smoking weed as a reason to take away people's guns. And I doubt that people have been given their guns back even where it's been legalized. We know this is going to be applied liberally to go after people like, for example, any of the militias that exist, like, for example, anybody that has a search history or has been found to have been discussing, you know, politically riotous topics like the insurrection. But more so, I'm thinking about the recent illustrations we've seen in social media censorship, right? Looking at Facebook, looking at Twitter, looking at YouTube, how they reacted to what they called disinformation or misinformation about the virus. Now, as we've seen, as the progressions have gone through, as science has slowly done its job with uh, the scientists themselves kicking and screaming the entire way and the politicization of the process, we have now seen that many of the things that we thought were true early on, right? That go went counter to the official narrative, that you would be removed from Facebook for, kicked off social media, which you could be you know, lose your job over, become a social pariah for thinking that maybe we don't have to wipe down all the surfaces, that maybe this virus can't transmit outdoors, even though there's scientific evidence back then to support it. But now we see that those things were correct. Yet we have people whose lives were ruined. We have people who can no longer access their social medias. We had people that have very large media platforms they built up who were deplatformed, who lost that revenue stream and who can't get back on. Or if they are, they're allowed back on and you start over from scratch. And I'm sure there's going to be the wary eye of government looking upon you. So we have the confluence here of the red flag law threat. We also have a media system, a social media system that's working hand in hand with government, right? You look at how Facebook had turned over context or uh, text conversations or Facebook messenger conversations between the Capitol rioters, and they gave them to the FBI. So the FBI could go after these people. Well, how nice of you, social media. We see how social media worked with government, the politicization of COVID to kick people off, to report those who were reporting disinformation and spreading anti, you know, anti Proved narratives. So do we not think in this era, after you have to have seen how the government works, how they've seen how they react to sensor information, do we not think that if another pandemic comes up the, the pike, right? Do we not think that they will use these red flag laws and get people reporting a violation of your mental health or a, an unstable mind if you dare question an official government narrative? Because I can basically guarantee you if red flag laws were in place during COVID and you started protesting and posting anti-lockdown memes or saying that you didn't think COVID was a big of a threat and you wanted to fight back against it, I can guarantee you that people like your loved ones, your idiotic, super woke loved ones would say, hey, you should take away his guns. He's a danger. He doesn't believe the science. And if there's anything crazier than not believing the science, I don't know what it is. So there you go. Instant reasoning to take away your guns. You're mentally unstable. You don't live in the same reality that the government has told you exists. Thus, how can you be trusted with a firearm? Think about that, folks out there. And as you do think about that, I got to tell you guys about a podcast I absolutely fucking love. It is called Burning Daylight, and it is by our good buddy here, Matt McKinley. He was a supporter of ours, a longtime listener of ours. And I remember in the early episodes, he had sent me some of the, his podcasts, and 
He's literally recording him on the back of a horse. He is a cowboy, a literal cowboy out in Nevada. And uh, it's just fun as hell to listen to him, man. Just cowboy banter. It's like, it's not all political, by the way. You know, he gets into politics. He is obviously a uh, very strident libertarian, but it's just cowboys shooting the shit. And it is fascinating being a fly on the side of that horse, just listening to two cowboys talk to shit. So check that out, guys. Again, burning daylight anywhere you download your podcasts. Uh, and uh, Matt's a great guy. So follow him on Twitter as well. Um, okay, getting back into it. Like I said, this is going to be a short, shorty, shorty, shorty episode. But I'll talk about uh, just a couple quick things. Number one, uh, I thought that it was pretty goddamn funny that Janet Yellen is telling us that we're only going to have 2.1% inflation. This is impossible. She's painting it like it's a good thing, too. She's like, oh, no, this is, this is just going to be a little inflation, the normal shit we've, we're used to seeing, and it's going to raise interest rates, so that's going to be fine. It's going to be all fine, guys. Meanwhile, you have Deutsche Bank and all these other foreign nations that haven't been drinking the, you know, the soup that the Fed is serving up to these imbeciles saying, no, no, there's no fucking way. You're going to see 4% inflation, if not more. We might see a crazy amount of hyperinflation because you have not only been printing trillions of dollars over the past year, $4 trillion plus dollars you're printing up and entering into the money supply or even more than that. On top of that, you have a COVID-related shortage in supplies. So now you're going to have prices skyrocketing because you're going to have far more demand than there are goods on top of devaluing everybody's money from pumping into the money supply. And yet we're being told that this is a universal good, that the, that inflation's fine, that everything's going to be just all right. I mean, you know, I famously, and I regret this now, had said, well, we should get away from Fed messaging in the near, in the interim, right? The near interim term. And that now, throw that out the window. I'm 100% wrong. The Fed is now once again going to be something that we can double down on. And I was just thinking about ways in which we can communicate life changes or life changing principles that will impact the everyday person. And the Fed now more than ever has become that because we can not only point to the crony capitalism, the bailouts of these corporations that aren't paying their fair share, right? Because they're being bailed out. They're getting crazy subsidies on top of the fact that because of this hyperinflation process, because of a lockdown caused by the government, right? Institute by the government that's causing a supply shortage on top of printing trillions of dollars to erode your savings and make everything you buy more expensive. We can tell people we can stop this. We can end this Fed. We can give you back stability in your money. We can help you and your money to go farther. And that impacts every single American. So there's that one. Um, the other thing, Joe Manchin is now the Democrats' number one most hated guy because he actually had the guts to stand up to the, uh, what is it? Uh, fucking, I can't remember the name of the bill. All Americans are super fucking cool bill, whatever the fuck they called it. But he decided he was not going to vote against it. And he wrote a whole big op-ed explaining his thinking. Uh, basically, the thinking is just that it would have given unbelievable power, unbelievable uh, partisanship ability to the Democrats to control pretty much the electorate forever. There's just no way it would have just completely eroded any sort of voter IT checks, any possible way to check or balance out voter fraud. Like, for example, this bill would have allowed you to go in same day register to vote and not demanded any sort of ID. Right? You just you sign a paper saying you are who you are. You could then go drive to another polling station, do the exact same thing. You don't have to show ID, write down a different name, vote again. Ad nauseum. You could keep doing it over and over and over again. That's just one example of many of the problems of this bill. So anyway, he is now the most hated. They're calling him the new Mitch McConnell. They're calling him all sorts of names. Oh, the For the People Act. That's right. It was so stupid and generic. I couldn't think of the name, the For the People Act. So anyway, God bless you, Manchin, because you may have saved us from going down a very terrifying, very slippery slope, which we would never be able to crawl back out of. Um, and then let's see, there's one more thing. Oh yeah. There was one more thing guys that I wanted to get into here. And that is just that the, uh, Canadian, let me see it. Canadian, oh, sorry. The college of physicians and surgeons of Ontario just announced a unbelievably insane policy. That's COVID related, right? And Ontario has been locked down. Ontario has famously had that, you know, I played that talk that they gave, like they had this PSA speech, just threatening people with lockdowns and punishments. If you don't obey the COVID laws and just Truly terrifying Nazi shit. Well, now the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario 
has announced another policy wherein they are commanding the doctors in Otero not to make any statements that can be considered anti-vaccine, anti-masking, anti-social distancing, or anti-lockdown. Now, I don't know how, and I don't, you know, I don't know exactly what Canada's freedom of speech laws are, but I find that absolutely repulsive because that goes beyond medical base, right? I could understand it if they're saying, you know, we don't want anybody talking anti-vaccines, even though they shouldn't be able to say that. But let's say the majority of their membership decides we as an organization are pro-vaccine. We would ask that nobody makes statements that are anti-vax, right? Okay, fine. But when you talk about anti-social distancing, which is proven to do nothing, has never been proven to have any effect and is completely irrelevant, it was was introduced this fucking pandemic to no effect, and to say anti-lockdown, which again, the lockdowns are incorrect. The lockdowns have been proven to do nothing except destroy people's lives. That goes way fucking over the line. And they are threatening that they will face disciplinary action, i.e., probably getting your license suspended. We are talking about medical doctors who can have varying opinions, who might be doing different work or just simply observing in their everyday practices, different ways in which people respond to the virus being completely shut out and shut down by the overarching board, right? That controls all of them, their licensing board, which is a scam anyway. I've talked about the AMA being a fucking scam, basically a racket. Same thing with this, obviously. But this is the world we live in. All right, anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Like I said, a quick hitter, and uh, I got to get moving, get a shower going, and get some dinner in me before I uh, hop along to a little work event I got to do. So anyway, peace out. Thanks for listening. I promise you will have a a wonderful, long, and lengthy, luxurious, Hunter Biden-esque, big dick episode coming for you next time on Electric Liberty Land. So for me, Brian McWilliams from the Lines of Liberty, And from Electric Liberty Land, always stay plugged into liberty.